I recently read a story about an elderly lady who passed away and whose family was left with the task of sorting through her things. The woman had become an accomplished patron of the arts, well-traveled, fairly affluent, when her relatives moved through the boxes of a lifetime they found that each box was neatly labeled, reflecting the woman's obsessions to know what was where, who was what, her sense of order by which she made sense of the world. Among the boxes was one that was marked pieces of string too small to use. Inside the box was a lifetime collection of pieces of string that were indeed too small to use. Nobody knew why she saved such seemingly useless pieces, only she did. And of course, her little secret expired with her. It occurred to me how amazing it is to examine what we choose to save in this lifetime, and no less amazing what we choose to give away. Some of us save things that have no practical use at all, and some of us pretend to give away so much of ourselves but never manage to reach the finish line. Some parents, for example, long for children more than anything else and then later complain they have no time for themselves. Some will give their children anything and everything they possess except their time and their attention. Some of us save up for the trip of a lifetime and never learn that actually life itself is the trip of a lifetime. Some of us are constantly traveling to exciting places, but are still bored wherever we are. Some of us know exactly whom we like and whom we don't, and then we don't like it when the facts force us to change that opinion. Some of us forget to be angry, and others of us never forget. Some of us collect old hurts and keep them in boxes in the basement of our soul. Some of us hold on to old grudges only to find out that few burdens can be heavier than old resentments. Some of us collect good wine. Some of us have a collection of everything we have ever whined about. Some of us like to show others what we collect. And some of us wouldn't dare. Some of us not only want to be part of anything, we, some of us don't want to part with anything. Some of us forget that letting go is the second most important commandment in Judaism after holding on. Some of us forget that people who never let go of things are often the first ones to lose their grip on things. I know of a family who loved doing jigsaw puzzles together. And when the puzzle was done, they glued it together and hung it on the wall. They treated it like a painting. Here was the time, they seemed to say, when we sat together and did something together to collect what we do together and remember what we did together. What better idea can there ever be for a collection? It all depends on what we choose to collect and how we fill our boxes. Sometimes our choices can lift our spirits. Other times, they can weigh us down. This Yisker hour, my friends, 
is a reminder that life itself is a collection, a collection of moments. It's like the synagogue bulletin that read, we have all the time and moments we ever need right up until the time we die, and then suddenly it's not enough. Moments can be pieces of string too small to use, but if we take the time and tie the moments together, those collection of moments can pull us to safety when our own time runs out. My father, who died 13 years ago this month, was not only an exemplary pulpit rabbi, he was also a professor of Jewish studies at the University of Florida. Following his death, I inherited a box, not of string, but of his university papers, in which there was an essay by one of his students, a young woman who apparently wanted to share with my dad her prize-winning essay that she had written in an English writing composition on memory following a lecture he had given on Judaism and memory. The college writer was wise beyond her years. Her essay was the story about an old man who had lived a good life, a productive life, and who loved his wife dearly. One night, many years before, the husband in the essay had taken revealing pictures of her in a moment of emotional intensity in the privacy of their home. They weren't naughty pictures or dirty pictures, but tender, thoughtful, and in a few, a piece of clothing was missing. Sometime later, his wife feared what her grown children might think if they ever found the photographs. So she tore them up. Not long afterward, she died. Shortly after that, her husband was sitting alone on a chair on the porch, rocking back and forth, back and forth, with the empty envelope from the drugstore that once held the photos. He held in his heart the memory of the photos and of his love and his lost love. Those pictures had been his cherished collection. And he died with the empty collection in his lap. The only thing that was left to collect had been his thoughts. Life, my dear friends, begins and ends with a heartbeat. What and whom we remember is more than a memory. It is the stuff of life, as much as any of the other stuff we choose to collect. The values that last are never, never in the things we collect, but in the people who collect them. The people I hope you're remembering right now, their memory is a blessing. They are not like pieces of string. They remain the love and the loves of our lives. Amen.